Well, today is the day we had to squeeze in a double header for this one. It is time to find out whether we've got a job. The time for time wasting is over. Let's go and get into it. Have we got a job? Have we got an interview? Or are we still frustrated at Airbus? Yes, hello and welcome along to part 19 of the head coach with me, Daniel. We are back today for a bonus final double header before the end of the beta. And we are back to end the cliffhanger. What on earth is going on on the job front? Are we going to have more interviews, a job offer, or are we going to be stuck here with Airbus UK? If you want to find out and you are looking forward to it, then please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe for daily FM23 content from two long-term stories. We'll be on the new schedule from tomorrow, so 3.30 every day, starting with the Builder Nation, will be rotating on the channel. There will also be a new episode tomorrow morning, though, as we look at the FM Mobile game for the first time, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. And there's a few other specials to come over the next few weeks. But thank you all for your incredible support. The Builder Nation playlist and the Twitch channel are in the eye above if you haven't seen them, as well as the top threes and much more. But this is all about ending the conundrum. Have we got a job offer? Have we got more interviews? Or are we stuck? Let's go and start on the job centre screen so you can see what's going on. Because if we have a look at the jobs available, there is Peterborough Sports and Stenhouse Muir that we are in the running for. Both of them we're not favourite. Kenny Miller, the well-known name for the Stenhouse Muir job, and Chris Anderson for Peterborough Sports. We didn't make any of the other ones we've applied for. So these are our only two options. Of course, you saw our interview at Peterborough Sports. It was pretty encouraging. We had some media speculation. But then, what happened after that? Well, Stenhouse Muir was a job we applied for. So what's gone on since? Let's get to the inbox. No need to hold it up any longer. Because, despite a pretty poor run with Airbus UK, where we still haven't won a game in seven, it is time to get out. Peterborough Sports have approached us, a chance to triple our wage, move back closer to home. I mean, I could probably commute from Luton, to be honest. They want to avoid relegation from the National League North and then reach the playoffs next year. But don't forget here in our third season, we looked in the last episode. This has been an eventful start for Peterborough Sports. Of course, at the start of the game, they are a newly promoted club into the National League North. In the first season of this save, they actually got promoted to the National League via the playoffs. Then they came straight back down again in 22nd place. So this is a side that I'm hoping will be stronger than it was when it started. They want to play defensively solid football. They wanted to reach the FA Cup and compete in a trophy. I've no idea if they're still in those competitions. They're still in the FA Trophy, but they've got a tough draw against Chester. And they've gone out in fourth round qualifying at home to Stafford in the FA Cup. That's a shame. But let's go and have a look at what state the club's in. We know that we've got to repair the financial damage. We know we're going to have a challenge on our hands. The club at the moment in the National League North is second bottom on 12 points. Ahead of Buxton, who didn't even offer us an interview, and three points from safety. Now remember, in our interview, we said we would exceed expectations and finish in mid-table. So we're essentially looking at roughly where Chesham are, maybe Alfreton as well. That sort of 15th, 16th place. So that's what we've got to chase. It's only six to eight points difference. I'm sure we can make it up. But let's get through the job offer. There is no way I'm turning this down. However, I have just noticed Gary Medine was the old manager. Very odd one, that. We don't know if they've got a director of football, an assistant manager, anything else. But we've got a job offer. A chance to get out of Airbus. I was never going to stay here long term after what the board did to us in the last episode. But we've also got an opportunity to move closer to home for a lot more money. And for our career, it's a great opportunity. So let's start the negotiations. They have offered us 550 quid a week on an eight-month deal. It's the same length of contract we have at Airbus, so no loss there. If we can get it up to 600, it will be an official trebling of our wage. So let's see if we can tempt them into that. We can indeed. A treble wage, a move back to England, and our first job in our home country. A real chance at the bottom of the National League North with a side that should be in a false position. 
I hope this is going to be the start of a great liftoff. All that struggle at Airbus, we talked about it in the comments. You said, why not resign? It's worth it. We got the two coaching badges. We had a little run and we've got ourselves a job offer. Off to Peterborough Sports we go. We'll be back in a moment to meet the staff and the players we're going to be working with. And of course, we'll have to plan a tactic and stuff as well. And here it is. We are in charge of the turbines. In a move which is sure to spark plenty of heated debate, we've left Airbus for Peterborough Sports. We've got a record of 29 wins, 23 draws and 42 defeats. That's not that bad for Airbus actually. And our first game will be against Billericay, which is four days away. We'll be under pressure to bring immediate success to the stadium. The Abbey Stadium. Is that Cambridge's ground? I think it is. Having stepped up from his previous standing to take sole charge, we'll need to hit the ground running for those who believe his appointment to be questionable. Neil Baker was favourite, but they've gone for someone else. But will we be sticking with the diamond? We'll wait and see what players we've got to work with. Jaden Smith is unhappy at the club. He is a super striker, I know that. So that's going to be a real good start for us. Let's go and get through the next page. We have got a history of media expectation 7th. Wow, that's pretty impressive. One star reputation, insecure finances, poor facilities. Club history is limited to be fair, but they have got an assistant manager in Mark Dickinson who we'll meet in a moment. Through to the next screen, they are suggesting the diamond, I guess because of us, but we're probably not going to stick with it. Oh, I've noticed who's up front. Oh no. It's a Channel Zero from a network saving years gone by. We'll get to that later too. Uh, we've got to avoid relegation. I'm sure that will go up because we said in our interview that we would finish mid-table. It would seem weird for them not to press us on that. The supporters just want to stay up. That's absolutely fine. Let's see what happens when we get to here because we're hired as manager, season expectations, avoid relegation. I mean, that's fine. Avoid a battle, we get a bit more on the wages and I guess... I've just noticed a problem. Have a look at our current spend on wages because that's insane. Current spend 5,800, current budget 4,200. So as much as I don't like to be friendly with the director of football, whoever comes in is going to have one hell of a tricky job. You have to give them that. So let's say we want to avoid a battle. It doesn't put it up by that much the second one. So we'll say avoid a relegation battle, get an extra 100 quid there. Might be one less player that's sold from under our nose. Tactical direction we'll sort in a minute because we need to know who the staff and players are that we're going to be getting out of trouble with. And as always, we'll start with the staffing because they are the most important people, whether we like it or not. So let's go through to all of them and meet our assistant, Mark Dickinson. He is 51 years of age. He's not very good. He's a poor coach. He's great working with youngsters. He's okay mentally, but... He's not a good coach. That's not a positive start. We've got a lot that aren't on actual contracts here. So Nick Conroy is a goalkeeping coach that's limited. Chris Plummer is a coach that is okay for this level. We've got Barry Fuller, who was the temporary manager, former player in many EFL clubs. He is 40 years of age. He's all right. And he's actually on a contract. So we probably need to make the most of him. Two performance analysts, which seems a bit strange. A head physio. Kelly Rayner, what's your rating? Five, geez. Darren Muat, the physio, 16. That's more like it. Uh, Anthony Coombe, sports scientist, is poor. Chief scout Luke Fogarty, you're going to be important. In the head coach, the director of football and scouts have to be good. This guy is not. Four for judging ability and potential. And then Andrew Seddon, the last scout, he's not much better. So there's some problems on the recruitment front. I mean, rightly or wrongly, I've basically got the impression here that we'll be all right this year and then our director of football who comes in will offer loads of crap contracts to players that are already here on massively reduced terms. They'll all turn them down and leave and then we're going to be left with half a carcass of a squad. So we need to have a really good season, basically. Let's go and have a look at the finances. How bad are they? Oh, wow. Nearly half a million in debt in the National League North. What they've basically done is gone up and gone for it far too much, haven't they? Because there's no way you can get into that mess without it. Let's go and have a look at the youth teams just to see if there's anyone worth promoting or anyone even there. I don't think there is. Uh, let's go and have a look at the facilities. What sort of state are they in? We've got, we are ground sharing with Cambridge. I knew it as soon as I saw it. So a big capacity, but I'm sure a small attendance. And I'd imagine they're paying rent as well, are they not? 11,000 a year, not a huge amount in fairness to Cambridge. 
uh, searching for a site for a stadium. How are they trying to make a stadium when they're in massive debt in the sixth tier? Does seem a little bit odd. No youth recruitment, basically. Very little junior coaching and poor training facilities, poor youth facilities. Doesn't look great, does it? Let's go to the first team squad then. Is the bit you all want to see. This is going to be the make or break time. All of that stuff that we've just looked at is for the long term. It's for the future. To kick the ground running, to make sure we survive, we've got to have a good team. And having come down from the National League and with a media prediction of 7th, this should be pretty decent. Let's go and look at it. So I just started by having a look at some of the wages and I think I've found out what's happened here. My suggestion is that they've come down and then scrapped their youth team because they've promoted loads of youth players that must have come through last season, but they haven't got anywhere where they can be relegated to. There isn't a remove to under-19s or a reserve, so I think they've scrapped their academy basically after getting relegated. But what it does mean is there's a big squad to work with here. Whether any of them are good enough, though, is a very different question. Top player on 450 quid a week, and the two players I recognise at this club, or in fact there's three players I recognise if I'm being honest, are Jaden Smith, Josh Walker and Jamie Sule. All of them I know are good players, and all of them are strikers. So this could be an issue for squad balance and tactics, but maybe we go for a flat front three, who knows. Let's go and get them in position order and in order of their reports, because we want to know what level of quality we've got to work with. And I think this youth team stuff is going to quite annoy us, because none of them are any good whatsoever. But let's start with the first teamers. I don't like the look of very few defenders with a gold star rating, but still... A decent goalkeeper is in the mix. Two and a half star Harry Fisk, 22 years of age, two and a half ability, three and a half potential. He is pretty solid. I mean, he's okay across the board. You've got to give him credit. He's not going to stand out. He's not fabulous. His match rating is awful this season, but he's not got a real big weakness in his game. So I'm perfectly happy with him as a solid pair of hands. His backup is one and a half star George Evans. Oh, he hasn't got the positioning, anticipation, or agility. Not my type of keeper, so very much a number two. But all of the youth ones are rubbish. Harry Fist, though, a solid number one. And for me, if he's that good at two and a half star ability, that gives me a bit more promise for the rest of the squad. So let's start at right back with Asher Falasse. He is two and a half ability, four and a half potential. He is one of the highest paid players at the club, and he's excellent. I mean, his natural fitness is superb, he's electric quick, good in the tackle, decent enough defensively. I mean, we couldn't have asked for better than that. This is going to be a good squad. If those two lads are two and a half star, this is a squad that should be right up there. Really pleased with that one. Released from West Ham and signed here. I mean, he's a solid pro. I can't ask for more. We've got three decent centre-halves. One of them's injured, but it's Lucas Ness. We had him at Dover last year in a head coach. What a player he was. How long is he out for? Two months. That's a shame. Really tall. Really good at the back post from corners. But a good player. Great positioning. Great jumping reach. Okay for the rest. I like him. He'll be involved at some point. The other two though are Sam Allardyce. Who is? Yes, Sam Allardyce's son. And he's a Bolton supporter as well. But if we look at him, he's pretty good as well. Only 5 foot 11, which is a slight shame. But... Good enough in the air, good enough physically, he'll compete for us. And again, injured for one day. But I feel like maybe that's where the last manager's been unlucky. It looks like half of his defence was injured and he's just coming back to fitness. The third centre-half that can compete is Carl Allsop, who is the first low knee we're going to meet. Two and a half ability, five star potential. He's all right. Not brilliant, but a good personality, so should improve. On loan from Barnsley, where he'll be full-time. So while Lucas Ness is out injured, I'm not too worried. We've got two good centre-halves. Likes to bring the ball out of defence. They're all okay on the ball as well. I mean, I'm really pleased so far. Let's see if the left-backs live up. Because we have got a three-and-a-half-star ability left-back. But let's meet the backup first, Tom Allen. He is two-star ability. He's a natural centre-half as well, so gives us more squad depth. Seems like the perfect player for the bench, if I'm being honest. He's tall, he's good in the tackle, he's decent in the air, his positioning's fine. I mean, he's got everything you need for a defender. Not at the peak of his powers, but versatile, good for the bench, really solid pro. Happy with him. What I don't think he'll be doing, though, is matching this guy. Toby Amole, three and a half star ability, four star potential. He's not the best, but he's a centre half. He's not a left back by trade. So this is interesting. 
what do we do now? Because he's electric quick. He's okay defensively. He's great on the ball. Looks more like a holding midfielder to me. But we might have to play him left back because we don't really have a natural out there. I will say one thing though. We've got a very tall defence. We can maybe take advantage of set pieces. We can maybe become a solid side a bit more direct. But I'm happy with him. He's not brilliant. He's not as good as three and a half stars suggested. But he does seem to be one of the better performers this year. Only five appearances though. Has he only just joined? He has. He came late in the summer. So he's one that will get involved more often. There is another left back further down actually. Or a left wing back. Josh Hallard. 21 year old on loan from AFC Wimbledon. He's okay. He's played a few games. But he'll be a backup. No more than that. Let's move into midfield. Where we've got loads of good players. Firstly Oliver Shannon. Listed as a defensive mid at 29. He is a natural right back and a natural holding midfielder, but he looks like a proper defensive mid. Versatile, three-star ability, good determined leader. Don't really want him diving into tackles with a 16 aggression rating, but played a lot of his career in Wales. I knew I recognised him. We've come up against him loads in our career. Solid pro, good player. He'll be a starter for us for sure. Alongside him, we have got uh, Alfie Pinyoun. He has three-star ability, another holding midfielder on loan from Southend. Bit better on the ball, maybe more of a playmaker type or a box-to-box. -box. Look at his physicals. 15 natural fitness, 15 stamina, bundles of pace, quite strong for 5'9 and works hard. Might just go in there as a dog's body to do all the running. So if we've got a good back four, if we've got a holding mid and him, maybe we look at a 4-3-3, but I know there's two good strikers coming. We could end up with a diamond here, couldn't we? Let's keep going again. Taylor Hart is the next centre midfielder. Two and a half ability, five star potential. Not particularly happy at the club. Wants to leave due to them getting relegated. I mean, he's not great, but he's okay. He's another one like Bin Yoon, who just falls into the sort of dog's body type. He's okay. He works hard. He's incredibly fit and he's got a decent character. But technically, there ain't much going on there. So he'll probably rotate with Bin Yoon or be his backup. Can we find a starter alongside him? Because next is Kellen Hickinson. Very young side again. 21 years of age. Three star ability. That's our man. But we've got a problem. He's a natural number 10. Maybe they weren't suggesting a diamond because of us. Maybe it is just the best tactic for this team. And maybe that's why they wanted us. Who knows? They might have put that together. Is the AI that intelligent? He's a very good pro. I like him. Perfect for that sort of attacking midfield role I like. Arriving late in the box, scoring goals. Oh, I like him. Really good footballer. Likes to carry the ball through the middle. He's quality. Good determination. Good physically. And even technically, he's not bad at all at 21. Proper superstar. I like him. Let's go down to the last centre midfielder, which is Tyron Akpata. 18 years of age on non-contract terms. Two and a half star ability. Very similar to the rest of the other centre mids. So that might be an issue with playing a diamond. We haven't got four that are that good. We could of course push a mole in there. But that would require playing an average left back. But again physically good. It seems to be what they were making the team up to be. A side that were physically competent. Could play two or three games a week and could compete. But this guy to be honest technically he's better than the rest. He's decent defensively. He's okay in a tackle. But he's not going to set the world alight. Again we know that. Let's move on to this attacking area because this is where things get a bit weird. I can see Jaden Smith and Josh Walker listed as wingers, but I know they're both strikers. So Tom McCallum is basically the odd one out here. If they're not good wingers, we're going to have to play a diamond or a central formation. And maybe that is why Peterborough Sports have hired us because Tom McCallum is actually a centre midfielder. He's two-star ability. He's on loan from Newport. He's backup level at best, if we're being honest. Again, not technically great. Again, physically good. But maybe not quite got the mentality that some of the others have got. He's a little bit younger. He is an emergency backup at best. So the midfield doesn't offer any wide men yet. And these three, I know are all strikers by trade. So let's start with Jaden Smith, who's unhappy, but seems to be the star of the club. Oh, he's so good. I know he can play off both wings, but he's three-star ability as a forward. He's quick. He's good off the ball. He's a good finisher. He likes to carry it. I mean, how has he only scored one in four for this club? The service must be poor because if you get these two running in behind, 
I could almost see us playing our Hemel tactic from the end of FM22 because we've got quick, young, quality strikers. And Jaden Smith, for as long as he stays, is going to be a superstar. Alongside him, we've got one of two options. Josh Walker, who can play off either wing or up front. An absolute villain of my FM20 network save against Craig from the podcast. He was with Barnett. He missed a sitter in extra time at the playoff final. And I ended up staying down on penalty kicks. But... He is a good finisher, he has got pace, he has got quality and for this level, a division lower, I'm sure he'll be a superstar. He scored loads of goals for Barnet and Dagenham in the National League and here in the North, he should be a real threat. Might not be a starter though, maybe could be a number 10 option because Jamie Sule is a player who's always been very good in FM. Three and a half ability, wanted by Concord and out of contract so we might not have him long but while we do... Oh, he's brilliant. I mean, him and Jaden Smith, how on earth are they in the relegation zone? They should be scoring bucket loads, and we will make sure they do. So overall, not the worst squad. I can see why they've picked us, because it is definitely geared towards the diamond. It's definitely geared towards what we've been doing. The issue is, there is a lack of depth. And let's be honest, there's one or two gaps. The midfield is lacking technical talent. So I'm wondering if we play long, we've got lots of big defenders who can go up for set pieces. And we've also got two quick strikers that can run in behind. But in midfield, we don't want to be passing it about because we're not a great team. However, I'm really pleased with that. It is not a squad that should be second bottom of the National League North. And I believe it's a squad that gets out of trouble. But let me know in the comments, do you agree that the diamond suits this team. I mean, there aren't actually any wide men here, so we're going to have to do it anyway. We could chuck two of the strikers out there, but then we'd have no backups for any of the front three roles. So hopefully you agree, but let me know in the comments if you do or don't. Let's go to the schedule and see when we're going to be back, because our first two games are against Billericay and Gloucester. And hang on, Oldham are in the National League North. My word. Let's have a look at where Billericay and Gloucester are. 19th and 18th. These are two big games, they're winnable games, and they're a chance for us to get out of trouble. We're not going to be competing with those top three, because they are massive clubs at this level. But, I want to get out of trouble, and two wins in the first two games could go a long way to achieving that. Will we get the new manager bounce? Let me know in the comments if you think we will. If you did enjoy this episode, our first move of the head coach, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on to stay up to date with the rest of this series. We will be back to our normal schedule from tomorrow, one episode at 3.30pm each day. It will start with the Builder Nation tomorrow, then the head coach on Wednesday, and so on and so forth. Thank you for all the support with the double uploads during the beta. There will be an FM Mobile video tomorrow, so still two videos across the channel. And come and follow us on Twitch and check out our Builder Nation. All the other content is in the eye above. But a massive thank you for coming along. I'm thrilled to have got the move out of Wales. Airbus, it was a big problem and we were on the decline again. So to get out, to get to a club with big potential is great. It's just how long we hold on to these players. Because with a director of football coming in, with the budgets needing to be cut, I could see this being a slippery slope towards the end of the year. So we'll be hoping for a positive start. I hope to see you on Wednesday to find out if we get it. You can find the transfer special from earlier today in our Builder Nation above my head now. And I'll see you here again next time. Thanks for watching. Come and join us for our first game in charge. <laughs>